G'day everyone, welcome to New Tech. My name's Miles and fantastic to have you here again. Uh, today's video will be a follow up from last week's video in teaching your machine how to draw. So let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so the secret behind painting with your CNC is actually using an inbuilt tool already in, in Fusion 360. Now that is the engraved toolpath. Now that allows you to set up a, an engraved tool and I've actually swapped it over with this paintbrush. So I've been able to set that up differently, but there's a couple of things that you really need to get right before you go ahead with this. The first thing is that we need to find out the dimensions of how far we can push this pen. So what I would ask you to do is grab your pen and then just make a couple of marks on the page. Now, there's two things that you'll be able to find from this. The first thing is that you'll be able to find the maximum width of your, of your pen, so knowing how far you can um, create your lines and also how far that your pen can dive down towards the piece of paper. So once you have drawn them on a piece of paper, go ahead with your calipers, measure the the diameter of the line, that will give you the maximum thickness for your tool. And the last thing is you also need to measure how far your pen can push down without compromising the end of your paintbrush. So once you have those two measurements ready to go, we're gonna jump across to Adobe Illustrator where we'll be creating most of the artwork. All right, so now we've established the pen width. Um, we can go ahead now and start drawing up our artwork. Now for today's tutorial, I'm actually using Adobe Illustrator uh, because this is what I typically use for graphic uh, work and uh, anything with vector, but I know that this is also possible on free programs such as Inkscape. So let's get started with the basic concept behind this artwork and then we can start building upon it. So using the pen tool, if I was just to draw a straight line, um, there would be an issue because I'm after something very organic and very much hand drawn. So if I'm to do a longer line, I tend to put a little bit of a kink halfway through to kind of create the realism of this uh, hand stroke here. So. Um, now I've drawn that line, um, there's a second step to create a more of a hand-drawn look. That is actually to create width within the line itself. Otherwise, if I just left the line like this, you'll notice as the pen went down, it would just keep a consistent same height through to the end and then release off the page. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using what you call a width tool. Now, what you can notice though with the width tool, I can go anywhere along my line click and drag outwards. Now you can see here that it'll only change the width at that point to the maximum size, and then it will kind of decrease that width until the very ends of each line. So I can put as many of these in as I want, but what you can notice is that there's a little pop-up window that is next to my mouse there in gray. And at the bottom there, you can see my width at the moment says 0.3, 0.25, uh, 0.253 and just remember that's in centimeters so uh, I know that the, my maximum width was 2.8 but just to keep it safe I'm going to keep it uh, slightly underneath the 2.8 so I'm not going over that maximum width of the pen line so I'm going to go through here and um, let's say let's put this at one, a 0.159 um, and then we can also change the, the thickness later on too. So I can make this slightly thicker or thinner as the line goes down. Now you can see that's at 0.34, uh, or maybe I want it at something quite thin. Um, so it's kind of like that brush stroke as it is quite thick here, and then it kind of fades out towards the end. So that's the basic concept behind um, creating the artwork that you'll need for this, giving it kind of a realistic look to the CNC. Um, there's a second point from here uh, that I need to do is that I need to convert the outer perimeter into a, a line itself. So that's quite simple. If you just jump up into object, go down to path and then go outline stroke. And you'll see that that actually creates a, a stroke around the outside. So I'm going to show you very quickly um, just a concept with a larger piece and what I'll do if I was to draw something like a face or uh, a larger piece of work and then converting that straight across to uh, Fusion 360. So let's get started on the larger work. 
Okay, so I've opened up a brand new project here and as you can see already under my layers tab, I've already got two different layers. So the first layer, I've actually put an image of myself and this one here, you can see I've used two different gels in the flash, a red one and a blue one. This is just to help me separate the, uh, the light direction for this tutorial. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make that layer slightly opaque. So I'm going to take it down to about 80% is fine and go back to my layers and just lock that layer. So the reason I've done this is because when I start to draw over it, it's a bit hard to tell the brush strokes that I've put in compared to the background image. So this way I can just definitely see that um, contrast between both the lines and the background image. Okay, so that one's been locked now. I'm gonna jump onto layer two and I'm gonna start with my basics of my black outline. So with the pen tool, I'm just gonna go around the main areas of my face using the black outline just to highlight those different areas. This will actually be my last one that I'll be drawn on top of my colors, but I'll be tracing this first just to get the main idea. So I'm gonna go through a time lapse just to show you this main thing, then I'll be back soon. So here we go. All right, so I've just finished um, drawing the main black outlines and you can see here that I've gone through and given the beard a little bit of texture, followed the shadows along here, my eyelashes, eyebrows, and then the shadows that are cast across my face. Um, so now that that's complete, I'm gonna go through and make all my lines a little bit thicker just to form kind of uh, the contours of these uh, dark areas that I've already um, outline so using the pen tool I'm just going to go through now uh, and look I'm, I know this is super tedious because uh, it will take some time and that's the joy of art so you know you put in the time to make something look wonderful and then you'll certainly come out with a really great uh, look about something so I'm going to go through and just create the width with the widths of the lines and then jump in to create the other two layers of color so once again it's a time lapse to speed up the process Alright, so I've just gone through and created the thicknesses of all my black lines and I just turn this layer on and off just every now and then to make sure that uh, it kind of is outlining the parts that I want. I'm really happy with what's happened so far. I know that there's some inconsistencies with shape here, but they will certainly become apparent when we start adding our other two colours in. So what I'm going to do now is just turn on that background layer and I'm gonna create a brand new layer. I'm gonna lock the top layer first. Actually, before I lock it, I just wanted to show you one slight issue. Now, on the tips of my pen, I've really tried to widen the, the center line, so as my brush comes down, it starts nice and thin, and then thickens, and then back out to thin again. Um, however, in this program, that it's actually squared the edges off. Now, that's a really simple way, a really simple thing to fix. And I'm just gonna select all by Control A, up here in the stroke um, the tool, uh, the stroke settings, you actually get, uh, um, you can do a round cap or a projecting cap, but I'm just gonna do a round cap and a round join. So when I go in now, that you can see they have some nice curved lines and this will be really nice when we start to do our lines um, in Fusion 360. So now with that selected, I'm gonna go through and jump onto my next layer. This will be my red layer. Um, for this, uh, you can either keep this bl black layer on or off, it's up to you, but I'm just gonna keep it on for the moment because um, there's sometimes I might want these lines overlapping um, or, or not overlapping, so I need to know where those lines are to start. I'm not gonna do the entire half of the face, I'm just gonna go the more richer reds around here, around the nose, and that little bit around the lip and the ears just to give it a little bit of texture. So once again, I'm gonna do a speed video just to do the lines and then straight away into the thickness tool. Okay, 
Okay, so I've just finished off the red parts of my image with the, uh, the red. That's on my separate layer to the black. So I can have a look at those layers separately. Now I'm just going to go to the, uh, the very last layer, which will be my gray instead of blue. I'm going to be using this gray around here and some slight grays just to highlight different areas. So once again, another time lapse and we'll be back soon. Okay, I've gone through and finished my gray areas. Now, um, what I did realize is that I was going through with the gray and I quite like the little bit of red fleck through the hair. So that's super easy to add in. I'm just gonna go through, unlock my red layer and then continue on with the, uh, the red layer instead. I'm just gonna try and choose the same color as I had there, perfect. And then jump back into my pen tool. I'm just gonna add some highlights of the red in here. Whoops, just change the line size to one point. Beauty. All right. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've finished uh, what I wanted to do so far. Now, um, I'm really happy with this outcome. You can see the level of detail around my, my subject and the highlights with the red has really made that subject pop. So I'm gonna um, finish up uh, very shortly with Illustrator, but before that, I need to convert all of these lines to uh, outline instead, and then we're gonna save it as a DXF. So let's jump onto our first layer here and select, let's just turn the other ones off for the moment. Uh, actually, I could do them all at once. We'll see how that works. So I'm going to select them all, go up to Object, Path, and we're going to go Outline Stroke. And there we are, voila. So I've got all the outlines of each of the strokes, and um, that's perfect. Exactly what we need for our DXF file for um, exporting and importing into Fusion 360. So, all right, so I've finished this final design and I'm gonna export this now to a DXF file. But uh, just before I do that, I need to make a reference point for Fusion 360. So when we come back into Fusion 360 and we import both our three drawings, I need to know the exact point where they line up with one another. So uh, I know that in Fusion 360, the toggle usually comes up in the top left-hand corner. So I'm actually gonna make my reference point there. Now this can be super easy. You can either use a square or a circle. So I'm just gonna use a square for this one here. And uh, let's say that's fine there. Uh, I'm also going to uh, make sure that that's on each layer as I copy it across. So I'm just gonna to go to my layer tab so you can see here that that's on the layer four. I'm gonna copy that and paste it into this layer as well. Make sure that it's aligned with my red layer. And same thing with my very first layer. And then just drag it on top. Now, if I turn each layer off, you can see that that square is on each layer. Um, and it's really important you do this now because it's gonna be so much easier to do your lineups in uh, Fusion 360. So I'm gonna go across now um, to save it out in a DXF file. So the easiest way to do it is just to select everything because um, if you save everything now, for some reason it saves everything underneath it as well. So we wanna save it separately. So I'm just gonna create a new um, A4 uh, project behind and paste it and, whoops. Try that again, copy that and paste it onto the second page. We'll go up to file, export and save as. Now I'll just save it over the one I did just a little bit earlier, go save, yep. And um, comes up with the window here. Now just make sure you've got this in the correct units you wanna work in and that you've been working in. I've been working in centimeters, so I'm gonna keep it as that and I'm gonna go maximum adaptability, okay. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing with my other layers as well. I can just paste them into this same document here. So select, unselect, turn that layer off and choose all my red, paste, file, export, save as. And this one is gonna be a red outline. 
All right, so now I've exported those as DXF files, um, I can go ahead now and start importing this image into uh, Fusion 360. So let's jump over there and create a new project file. Once you have Fusion opened, uh, the first thing is that you need to set up the stock that you're gonna be um, drawing onto, and this is gonna be my A4 piece of paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create a rectangle the same size as my A4 piece of paper. That is gonna be 297 mil high and 210 wide. Okay, um, from here I'm just gonna be using this as a guide so I know that I'm going to be including it within the space that I need. And uh, I can actually import um, these uh, straight on top of the uh, stock that I've just drawn. So let's go insert DXF and let's go ahead and find that file. Okay, so the very first layer I'm gonna be doing will be the red layer. Now you can see here, as soon as it's imported, it's actually imported as inches. I exported mine as centimeters, so please change it over here. And then we're gonna drag it into the spot, which should be round about, oh, that looks pretty good. Okay, and you can see as I import it as a new object or a new sketch, it actually comes up here. So I start to get different layers for my different uh, layers of color. I'm gonna go ahead and add my other two uh, layers in as well. So the next one's gonna be the gray outline. Change it to centimeters. Okay, and this is where we have to align those squares on top of each other. So because it's a painting, it doesn't need to be uh, perfect, but getting as pretty close as possible would be very beneficial. Okay, that looks pretty good there. And I'm just gonna go okay. And for the very last one, I'm gonna go insert DXF. Same process as before, put the black outline in. There we are, we have all three layers imported into our Fusion 360 file. Please make sure you go ahead and save your work so we don't lose it. Now it does look kind of a little bit different um, than we did see over in Illustrator, but that's just because we haven't got our colors in yet. So let's just trust the process. Uh, that's all we need to do in regards to kind of getting the sketch up and going. So now we can jump over to the manufacture page and this is where things get a little bit more complex. So um, let's set up our stock first so we know what we're painting onto and let's go this as my stop point. So I've got my X and Y direction, perfect. And for this one, I'm gonna say no offsets at all and okay. All right, the next thing that I need to do is set up my um, engraved toolpath because this will be mimicking the engraved toolpath to find the widths of these lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and create an engraved toolpath, but this is where things kind of take a little bit of a turn to creating um, the perfect tool for this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new tool and this is actually gonna be a, uh, a chamfer tool. Let's just keep that as is, doesn't matter about that too much. Um, I'm gonna go, my tip diameter is uh, zero. Now over here, you can see that we have our chamfer and we need to kind of mimic the same shape as our brush. Now there'll be a little bit of math involved in creating this because we can't measure directly with the brush itself. So um, I'm gonna jump across to my diagram I've got here. I've just taken a photo of the brush and this is just gonna explain very quickly my concept and how I've set up my brush. You could certainly just wing it and see what happens, but I rather do things right the first time so we get this uh, a really great outcome at the end. Um, so what we've got to do is first of all, we've found out already how far it can be pushed into the page and we find our uh, diameter. Then we also know how far we can push in. So we're actually going to jump into so, a little bit of trigonometry here to find these different aspects of it. So we're going to draw up first of all our triangle to find a couple of different values. We already know the A value because that's actually half the diameter to find the radius. So that's that little part of the triangle. And we already know how far we can push the brush into, which is the B. 
but I need to find their h and the x angle. I've already figured it out here, so I'm gonna show you very quickly the working. However, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because it might take some time. So just very quickly, I'm gonna talk through what we need to find out. So the very first thing is we go in and we do a little bit of basic maths to find the hypotenuse here, the h side, and we do the calculations and it pops out there. Then we have to square root that to find the length, which is 5.67. From there, we need to then find the angle. So we're gonna use our Sakatoa and we'll just jump into here. And we're, because this is opposite hypotenuse, we'll be using this formula here to create that. And speeding through, we'll find our values along the way. So you can see here that I've just, and this is a little bit, um, if you're not too sure where to find this sine minus one, the oppositional angle, uh, we can just jump into the scientific part of our calculator on Windows, click there, and then down here under the second function, our sine minus one, if you click the second function there, that will pop up to, to find the answer to this. So I found the angle was around 75 degrees, which would be perfect for our setup in Fusion 360. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and set up our tool. Now, this is gonna be a chamfer mill, and we're gonna have the tip diameter is zero. Then it's gonna go into our overall diameter, which we said was 2.8. Um, up at the taper angle, now what you've got to figure out is it won't be 75 degrees um, directly of this angle, it'll actually be what's left over from 90 degrees. So, so that means you have to do a quick calculation. So we had 90 degrees minus 75, that equals 15. So our angle that we place into Fusion 360 will be 15 degrees. And you can see that that's mimicking really well on that. Um, now our flute length, so that was our 5.5. Okay, and the other values, I'm just gonna leave them as they are. Um, the next thing I'm gonna go through and just change my holder to mimic the one that I've already got there and change. Now the feeds and speeds can be much faster than you typically use. So I'm gonna put, for example, if I said it was on a 30,000 RPM there, or we can run this at, I'm gonna see what it's gonna uh, do on 2000 and let's say put that up to uh, 900. Because it's only painting, we need to go fairly fast to get this done. And so the, the brush isn't sitting on the paper for too long. And then click OK, and then OK again. Whoops, I forgot to do that, so disable the flood. Now in here, this is where we uh, start to put together our um, our lines. Because this is the very first one we're doing is the red layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn off all the other sketches there. So turn off the gray and the black one, and then that's our red one there. So I'm just gonna select these contours, and then I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I've selected those contours, and that's fine. I'm just gonna leave the rest of the settings as they are and click OK. So as you can see there, that engraved toolpath came up really nicely. That's uh, gone through and you can see the depth of that pen being pushed in there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this to my other two layers as well. So I'm just gonna turn off the red outline. Let's do the gray one next. And I'm just gonna duplicate this path so I don't have to do the setup again. Jump in here, I'll go edit those selections so far and once again I'll be back in a sec. Okay second one done and same thing for the third one as well just going to go ahead duplicate that. All right so I've just finished the last uh, toolpath and just waiting for that to generate. That should take just a couple more minutes. Um, what I'm gonna do while I'm waiting for that one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start exporting these out so we can get straight onto the machine and start painting. Okay, so I've loaded up the file for the project and I'm just about to zero off my pen. You can see that I've got it attached here to the pen mount, nice and secured, the lid's off and I'm just gonna bring that down to 
the height that I need for zeroing. So that means I'm just going to allow it to touch the paper. Okay, so you can see there I've just got it just touching. I could probably go down just a little bit more and that works out perfectly. Just make sure that it makes the lightest little uh, dot as possible without going too far in. But I'm really happy with how that's set out at the moment. So let's hit uh, play and see what happens. I am so impressed with this outcome. This is fantastic and I hope you guys have really enjoyed the process so far. I've used this technique many times and it has worked 100% of the time. So I hope you guys take it away with you and give it a go for yourself. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.